Want to make a podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere and earn money, all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. Ever since we discovered Spotify for Podcasters, we have had so much fun trying out all of the features like Q&As and polls that let us be really creative and engage with our audience. I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. Big Cambridge news as William and Kate visit the Queen of Balmoral and talk of moving closer to her in Windsor. Harry looks dashing in a tux and Princess Charlene of Monaco is apparently ready to come home. It's all right here on episode 36 of Podcast Royal. Welcome back to episode 36 of Podcast Royal. Good to see you two weeks running. We're back in the swing of things or trying to be, as we said. So how are you and how is your week going? What are you into? I am doing well. Um, It's so good to chat with you again this week. And, um, you know, I was just sitting here thinking before we started recording, I don't even know what I'm into this week. I feel like the week has gone by so quickly. It's super busy for me. Um, uh, You know, it's been a crazy work week, um, but just have had a whole lot going on. So I guess off the top of my head, um, you probably saw on Instagram, I was um, decorating my front door area for fall. I know I mentioned last time, I think that I was excited for some fall stuff to come this way. So this is the first year I've done like one of those sort of like cozy plaid outdoor rugs by my front door. Um, and I'm really into it. It's, you know, I'm, I'm not a huge fall decorator, but, um, I added this, like, I don't know, just like a beigey, uh, plaid sort of just cozy little rug outside of my front door. And it's still 75 degrees here in Birmingham in the mornings. I don't even know what it got up to today, honestly, probably 90, but, um, nevertheless, it got me in the mood for some other fall activities so what about you it does not feel like fall here let me tell you I was in a restaurant it was Cracker Barrel the other day and they had Christmas decorations up and I was like (laughs) it is 95 degrees outside it is not time for this I'm definitely not decorating for Christmas yet but I do recommend to our listeners go um get some fall plants for your front entryway and a nice little cozy rug or something and you'll you'll definitely be ready for all the other activities. I'm so ready for the heat to break and for it to be a little cooler. It's football season that's we can check that off our list but now it's time for the cooler temperatures please. As you know listeners we live in the deep south so we are we have been it's been a hot summer for sure. So for me this week okay I struggled this week too and um so I have a late minute, a last minute, excuse me, a late minute, a last minute edition. But I think honestly, this week, maybe one of the highlights of my week is over the weekend, I went to my favorite local bookstore. Thank you books. Have you been there yet? No, I haven't. Where is that? It's in Crestwood. And I'm going to have to take you there because it's just my favorite one becoming one of my favorite places in Birmingham. I went there on Saturday and I picked up two new books, which it's so dangerous for me to go in a bookstore because I end up spending way too much money and I walk out broke, but it's worth it. Um, I know listeners that it's easy and tempting to order off of Amazon for your books, but I encourage everyone wherever you are to support a good local bookstore because there's nothing like it. I'm really going to have to take you there. It is, it's, 
female owned and it's just really a good vibe and they have great books. And the last minute addition that I want to add in is last night I, and I told you this, but I'll tell our listeners, this is my, if my sound quality is a little bit different, I'm over at my mom's this week. And so we, I don't have cable, she does. And so last night we watched the first episode of American Crime Story Impeachment about the Monica Lewinsky scandal. Mm -hmm. And that was really good. We're going to be in for a good season of that um, this fall because it is, it's very compelling. It's very multi-layered. So I enjoyed watching that last night too. Awesome. That sounds very interesting. I have not seen that yet. Well, good news. It's on FX and FX has that partnership with Hulu where they air their shows the next day on Hulu. So you can catch it on Hulu. Oh, oh cool. I have Hulu. So that's good yeah, to know. So check it out. So, okay, we're going to jump into the Royal Rundown. It's pretty slim still as we kind of are merging back into regularity after the holiday. So news was a little quiet on the Cambridge front last week, but never fear, they're making waves again. Big waves, actually. William, Kate, and the kids reportedly recently enjoyed visiting the Queen at Balmoral, and they might be seeing her more than ever in the near future. Reports say that they are strongly considering moving from their current home base of Kensington Palace in London to Windsor, which is at least for the time being where the queen is based rather than Buckingham Palace. As we'll discuss whenever we do our (laughs) deep dive on the Windsor Diaries, Windsor is where Her Majesty and Princess Margaret, her sister, spent their childhoods. And their new home, meaning the Cambridges, might just be Frogmore House, which is not the same, I should clarify, as Harry and Meghan's former home of Frogmore Cottage. That is situated just a half mile away from Windsor Castle. So Eugenie and Jack, of course, are currently at Frogmore Cottage, but Frogmore House is currently unoccupied. So what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I, you know, I'm not really sure. Um, I, I definitely could see some advantages to maybe moving out to Windsor, especially with the kids. Um, but I also feel like they seem to have how many houses do they have that they go to regularly I mean Kensington Palace and Anmer Hall in the country yeah I, I don't know you know I mean I guess if, if they've just you know I, I feel like even if they move from Kensington Palace like they're still gonna probably be around there pretty regularly so it just feels like you know you've got a lot of different places that you're going back and forth from I I don't know um I don't know if I could do that but I mean, I I mean, I think it could be great. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think that they want to probably spend as much time as possible with the queen. And also interesting to note, Eton, which is where William and Harry went to school, is uh, in Windsor, near Windsor. And so this might be a potential move for George because that could signal that they plan to send him to Eton and then they'll be very close by and probably Louis as well and they'll be very close by when that happens so that is kind of what I'm feeling is that I see Eaton and George's future now more than ever if this is true and the bonus is they'll get to spend time with the queen they'll be a little removed from London and um because they're they seem to prefer the country lifestyle or the more country-ish lifestyle rather than in the city. So I, I guess we'll just wait and see what happens. But what that, when I read that piece of news, what that instantly said to me was they're going to send George to Eden. And That's, yeah, I had heard that too. And I do think, I think you're right. I think they like, especially Kate, I think likes being a little bit more in the country. And if they're going to do it, my feelings are now is the time because when William does become king, um, they'll probably have to spend a lot more time in London. Yeah, or even Prince of Wales, right? Whenever whenever right. his father ascends. So if there was ever a time, it would be now. It would be now. So in other Cambridge news, apparently William and Kate are teaching George, Charlotte, and Louis to sail, which makes sense as both William and especially Kate are keen sailors. And William was in the news this week as he stepped in to make sure an Afghan army officer and his family were able to leave Kabul, Afghanistan, following the Taliban's takeover 
of the capital city. So way to go, William. And in some Cambridge adjacent news, happy birthday this week to Pippa Middleton Matthews, Kate's sister, who turned 38 on September 6th. She remains one of my favorite royal adjacent people, by the way. I really like Pippa. Yeah, I do too. And Harry made a surprise appearance this week at the 2021 British GQ Man of the Year Awards, presenting the GQ Heroes of the Year Award remotely from his home in California. Though he may have been at home, he looked rather dapper in a tuxedo. And the Royal National Lifeboat Institution this week honored the late Prince Philip with a lifeboat named in his honor, commemorating what would have been Philip's 100th birthday this summer. It is appropriate, appropriately called the Duke of Edinburgh lifeboat and is said to be state of the art. And some late breaking news, I read today, actually, we're recording this on Wednesday for a change, Wednesday, September 8th, that there will be a program on the BBC honoring Philip's life, and it will have participation from the family. And I believe the air date was September 22nd, so we'll have to watch out for that. Hmm. So some kind of disturbing news surrounding Prince Charles this week. Longtime aide Michael Fawcett has temporarily resigned from his chief executive role at the Prince's Foundation after allegations have surfaced that Fawcett promised official royal honors to a Saudi tycoon in exchange for large donations to Charles's charities, according to Harper's Bazaar. Charles, by the way, denies any knowledge of this. So do you have any thoughts on this? If that's true, that's very damaging. And I truly hope that Charles is not involved. Well, that was my thought. Um, I actually, like I said, this week has been crazy and I had not even seen this story. So this is the first that I'm hearing of this. Um, and when you were reading that, um, that headline, I was just thinking, um, I hope, Certainly, that it's something that Charles was not aware of. Um, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I guess, I guess we'll have to wait and see what else comes of that. But I had not, I had not heard that story. Yeah, that's really damaging. It's true. I believe that the police are getting involved, and so I just pray that Charles's hands are clean of any knowledge because that could be very damaging for for him. And I hope that he has no knowledge of it and it doesn't damage the good work that his foundation is doing. So we have spoken about this story on the show before, the kind of bizarre saga surrounding Princess Charlene of Monaco. So her husband, Prince Albert, has said this week that his wife is ready to come home from her native South Africa, where she has been since mid-May due to health concerns. Um, well, if she's ready to come home, I would love to see it happen. It's just this, this story is very complicated and Albert kind of got angry in the press today about people probably just like me who are doubting like the validity of this story and it just is just really kind of strange but I guess we're living in strange times so what well else it is strange and we still I mean we haven't cracked the code on this one or really figured out what is going on there but Wish them the best for sure. Of course. Yeah, of course. Wish uh, health and happiness to the whole family. So some good news. Spencer, the Diana biopic starring Kristen Stewart, premiered at the Venice Film Festival this week to absolutely rave reviews. So Owen Gleiberman, writing for Variety, says, quote, Kristen Stewart doesn't just do an impersonation, though on the level of impersonation, she's superb. She transforms. She changes her aspect, her rhythm, her karma. Mostly, though, what we see in Stewart's Diana is a woman of natural born elegance with the luminosity that pours out of her, except that part of her is now driven to crush that radiance because her life has become a wreck. So are you excited to see this movie November 5th? I am excited. Um, and I've heard that Kristen Stewart does a great job. Um, looking forward to it. I think this is one that you and I should both see together. I completely agree. And I will admit, I mean, I think I've said it on the show before. I was really skeptical about that cast, about that casting, but yeah. it turns out that she killed it. And finally, yet another royal is moving to the U.S., which seems to be the hot spot for European and now Asian royalty. Princess Mako of Japan will be relocating to the U.S. to marry her college sweetheart, who is a commoner. 
turning down a $1.3 million payout from the Japanese government that is traditionally paid to royal women who lose their royal status when they wed, as she will. The couple plans to settle in New York City. I don't know what we're doing to get the spoil of riches of royalty on our soil, but I guess we don't have a monarchy. So we're just going to take everybody else's royals <laughs> and, and, and have a cornucopia of global royals in the U.S. We'll take it. And finally, for me today, the third in the Harry and Meghan Lifetime movie trilogy aired on Monday night. Listeners, please DM us or email us with your thoughts. We'll tell you how to do that at the end of the show. I want to know what you thought of that disturbing opening scene and who you think Victoria is and what you thought overall. Do you think there will be a fourth movie? Let us know. Do you think there'll be a fourth movie? Well, so I have a confession to make. Uh Uh-huh. So listeners remember Rachel and I were supposed to watch this together Monday night and we ended up having a conflict and we couldn't do it. And um, the movie was like halfway through when I got home from running some errands and I didn't want to pick up halfway through. Um, But later in the night, I was able to go back and um, replay it. And so I thought, well, I'll, I'm going to watch it and just see. Um, Rachel, it was really bad. (laughs) Was it? I couldn't get through it. I could not get through it. I, um, I might've watched half of it and I feel like, I think I like dozed off at some point. It was so bad. Um, The acting was not great. I didn't really like how they portrayed the characters. Um, I feel like they really sort of painted William and Kate in a really bad light. Um, I did that in the second one too. Yeah, it just was not, it was not good. I do not recommend it. Um, So I would love to hear listeners thoughts. um, If you guys watched it, if, if you enjoyed it, Um, I was really hoping it would be sort of like a Hallmark movie type thing. I love the little cute love stories on Hallmark channel. Um, That's not Lifetime's vibe. They don't do it. (laughs) Lifetime is definitely not like that. I I was just kind of hoping that it would be a little bit more cutesy, but it was not. And um, I was just really, you know, I'm, I'm really glad we didn't go out of our way and try to coordinate sitting through that not not worth it huh we'll save it for the Kristen Stewart movie okay well (laughs) listeners we'd love to know your thoughts stick around to the end of the episode and like we always do we'll tell you how to get in touch with us and that's all I got but I hear you've got some information on Kate and her patronages and how she is uh, just flourishing in those Yeah, so I thought today would be really fun to take a little inspiration from the Duchess of Cambridge and share some thoughts on how listeners can make a royal impact in their own communities. So we know the royals have been sort of off through August, kind of enjoying some family time, but they're getting back to work. So I imagine we'll be seeing them highlight several of their patronages over the next several months. Um, you know, Kate is patron to several organizations and all of these, I think, are causes that are pretty close to her heart. Um, they all seem to reflect her passions um, and, and her role with the organizations really allow her to shine a light on the work that they do um, and make an impact by working alongside um, these different groups to improve the communities that they serve. So you might remember last year we saw Kate working on the Hold Still project with the National Portrait Gallery, um, and that was really aligned with her photography passion. We also saw her make some big progress with her early years initiative, and then that prompted the creation of the Royal Foundation Center for Early Childhood. So I say all that to say now that summer breaks are coming to close for all of us, um, people are really gearing up for fall activities. And I just think at this point in time in the world, there's a big need um, for volunteers and there's an abundance of opportunities out there to get involved and make an impact wherever you live. So want to share some guidance inspired by Kate on how to really identify organizations that are meaningful to you um, and get involved with them. And um, then I want to finish this out talking about a couple of the patronages that Kate is involved in. So to begin, um, 
Let's take some inspiration from her. And if you're looking to find these organizations, start by identifying your passions and where you truly wanna make an impact. So some things Kate is passionate about that we know of are early childhood, mental health, sports and outdoors, and visual arts. And these are all things that she tends to gravitate toward um, in, in her different roles. Um, many of the organizations that she works with falls under these categories. So, you know, start there. Think about the passions that you naturally gravitate toward, anything you're particularly skilled at or interested in, um, and the hobbies that you enjoy in your free time. Write those down. Start researching organizations in your community that provide services in those areas and then get creative. Um, you know, so for example, if you're really skilled at math, um, maybe you can volunteer tutoring kids. Um, if you enjoy being in the kitchen, I know a lot of places right now really need help serving meals to the homeless, restocking community pantries, delivering snacks to kids. And um, maybe you work in a specialized field and you can share your knowledge with others who could really benefit from that. Um, that's another great way to volunteer. I know some organizations do like coding workshops for kids. So if you work in IT, you could do something like that. Or if you work in finance, you could do financial tips for adults um, who need it. Or if you like something like gardening, um, you could always look to beautify a space in your city. One thing that my hometown does that I really love, Rachel, I don't know if you've seen this or not, but they do this thing where you can adopt a small location and you're responsible for keeping it beautiful. So it might be like, um, you know, a corner of a block or just a small part of a road and you pledge to pick up trash regularly, keep flowers planted and just oh make sure it stays pretty. Yeah. And they'll even put a little plaque with your name on it as long as you've adopted that area. Um, so I love that. Um, there are a lot of nonprofits that have buildings or green spaces and may need some, some maintenance work done. So that's another area you could look into. Even volunteering with animals, if you're a pet lover. Mm -hmm. um, I know there's a lot of organizations that take volunteers for that as well. So definitely think outside of the box. Brain dump a list of ideas and organizations you can get involved in. Um, you know, and you may even find some professional clubs that focus on volunteering in the community and connect you that way. Churches are also really good about focusing on community needs and volunteering, so you may check with them as well. I will say this about Kate. All of her work feels very authentic to who she is. It doesn't feel mm -hmm. as though she's being forced to do any of this, like the Hold Still Project. I thought that was brilliant because that we all know that Kate loves photography even the you know most passive royal lover knows that and so it just it all feels really really like they're all passion projects and that makes them more special I think I totally agree I was reading you know the list of organizations she works with and I thought man she really um lucked out with these and then you know I thought more about it and I was like they they just fall so in line with the things that she naturally cares about yeah. So once you find organizations that interest you, go check their websites out for inter information on how to get involved. Um, a lot of organizations post like a monthly calendar with volunteer dates. Um, a lot of them will have a needs list that you can access or maybe a list of projects they need help with. Um, so reach out, contact them on how you can get involved. You may have to fill out a volunteer application. You might even have to undergo a background check or sign a waiver, depending on the type of volunteering that you wanna do. Um, so hopefully that gives a little bit of guidance to listeners on how to get involved in the community. Now I wanna talk a little bit about Kate's um, patronages and we'll wrap this up. Um, so she, and I actually counted on the Royal Family website, I counted 22. Um, that are under her name. I don't know if anything's changed, if they've not updated that recently, but um, I think that's probably a pretty close guess. On Let me tell you that that's, that's, that's pretty, that's a pretty large number. So I remember writing a blog post when I um, still wrote regularly on my Royal blog, the Duchess commentary about Kate and Megan's patronages. And I believe at that time, Kate only had about 10 or 11. And that was two years ago. So she's doubled her 
workload that which is not surprising considering all the things that have happened in the family the people that have left the family uh, whether voluntarily or involuntarily and um so she's she's doubled her workload in the last two years she has yeah but you know 22 does feel it feels doable to me if you think about how often you can check in with these organizations over the course of a year. I know there are other members of the family who work with more than that. And I think it gets to a point where you have so many, it's hard to really do meaningful work with all of them. So 22 feels like a pretty good number for me, but I'm sure that will continue to grow in the years to come. Oh, it will, because I think Anne has like, I mean, over a hundred, I want to say, mm-hmm. like months. but Anne is also respectfully not raising three young children. So, you know, in time, Kate's number will, will grow and grow and grow. For sure. So I'm going to highlight just three here that kind of stuck out to me. Um, one of the organizations she works with is Family Action. According to their website, this organization helps families dealing with financial hardship, mental health problems, social isolation, learning disabilities, domestic abuse, substance misuse, and alcohol problems. And they provide a number of services across these areas, including childcare, family support, housing, emotional health and well-being services, food programs, special education needs support, mentoring and advice, and adoption support. Um, so really cool organization, like we said, falls right in line with, um, with Kate's passions. Um, another group that she works with is called Place to Be. This mm-hmm. organization focuses on children's mental health. So I thought this was really, really cool because I think there is, you know, and we've talked about this before as Kate has, there is a gap there when it comes to mental health resources for adults and children. Um, So Place to Be provides support in schools. They offer one-on-one and group counseling, and they offer mental health training for school staff. They also have a really great page on their website designed to help kids under the age of 18 um, that feel troubled about something and need help. So if the program maybe isn't offered at their school and they don't know where to turn, um, this page will provide resources for kids looking for information, but they also share emergency hotline numbers for kids to call if someone is in danger. So really cool organization. And I've then seen a lot of her work, she's worked with them for many, many years. So I've seen a lot of her work with them over her time as a royal. Yeah, yeah, I think, again, that that's right in line with those early years, um, and even older um, support that she really focuses on. So the last one I was really going to highlight was the Royal Photographic Society. We know Kate loves photography, and she's gotten really, really good at it um, the past few years. So this is a membership society. It's focused on bringing great photography to everyone. They host exhibitions and educational events like workshops and virtual talks. They also offer photography competitions. Um, Their website says they provide opportunities to help all interested people develop their photography skills and individuals could be considered uh, to be featured in an exhibition um, and potentially receive funding for a photography project. So There is a page where you can make a donation, you can gift a membership, or you can join to be part of a workshop or help with their educational events and even grow your own skills. Um, So I think these are good examples of organizations out there that, you know, may not be the type of organization that first comes to mind when you think of community service. Um, But they're doing great things and they're really helping to educate kids and adults, grow skill sets, um, and just providing good resources for the community. I love it. I hope that this can, because God knows our world needs volunteers right now. We, mm-hmm. you know, there's, there's, if, if you're not interested in one aspect of volunteering, there's a hundred more behind them that our world just needs help. And so hopefully we can take a page from Kate and really the entire royal family whose lives are dedicated to service and find our niche where we can serve. For sure. I love so that. So I'm going to, 
I'm going to read off a list, a full list of the patronages listed under her name on the Royal Family website, just so listeners know the ones she's working with, um, and we'll wrap up after I read that. So her organizations are Action for Children, All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club, which is Wimbledon, <laughs> Anna Freud National Center for Children and Families. East Anglia Children's Hospices, Evelina London Children's Hospital, Family Action, Ford Trust, National Portrait Gallery, National History Museum, NHS Charities Together, Place to Be, Royal Air Force Air Cadets, Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, Sports Aid, the 1851 Trust, the Foundling Museum, the Lawn Tennis Association, the Royal Foundation for the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, the Royal Photographic Society, the Scout Association, the Victoria and Albert Museum, and Tuvalu Order of Merit. So lots of organizations she's involved with, lots of great work she's doing. And I hope now that they are starting up their work for this coming year, We've gone through these, we've read them off. So when we hear them highlight what they're doing, uh, maybe this will jog some memory for our listeners and you'll remember um, some of these that we've talked about today. Um, so keep that in mind and let's look forward to all of the work that they've got going on this year. I'm ready for them to be back in action. I wanna see them. We haven't seen Kate in a long time. I think it's been like almost a couple months at this point. So. I know I have been looking yes and I feel like you know we took the month of August off because we knew the royals were going to be off and we came back in September like we promised and it feels like they're not back yet so we're yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> we've, had, we've had two episodes of um not not a whole lot of new news but um we're excited and we're looking forward to the next couple of episodes because they're Absolutely. ready to get back out there and maybe Kate is just busy packing boxes to move to Windsor. I don't know. We, that or, or school lunches. <laughs> yeah, school, pack, packing everything from boxes to school lunches. <laughs> Listeners, don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Podcast Royal. DM us there. We always answer. Email us at hellopodcastroyal at gmail.com and follow us, rate us, review us. It really helps grow this Podcast Royal community. Thank you so much for tuning in to episode 36 of Podcast Royal. We'll be back next week with episode 37. Bye. Bye.